Welcome back to our continuing coverage of some great news for the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi being uh, awarded the United Nations highest environmental honor, Champions of the Earth Award. There's a special ceremony that is uh, presently on. In fact, these are the visuals of that ceremony that is taking place as I speak. Uh, the ceremony, in fact, uh, is going on with the Prime Minister being honoured with the United Nations Highest Environmental Award, Champions of the Earth. He, along with the French President, are both recipients of this prestigious award. Uh, I'm going to go straight across now to India Today's Geeta Mohan for more on this. Geeta, but why Prime Minister Modi? Why was he uh, recognized for the work and why has he been chosen uh, to be given this very prestigious award? Well, Avantika, governments make choices. They pick their battles and India has picked her. Uh, India was very clear with the Prime Minister in charge uh, after 2014 that the biggest challenge for uh, the world today is not just security and terrorism, but also climate change. So this battle was picked up by the Indian administration, by the Indian establishment since 2014. Uh, the Prime Minister has been at it when it comes to the fight against uh, climate change. And, uh, and the various announcements and the policies and programs that you see, Avantika, are the reason why this recognition is coming our way. Uh, also, important to note are the negotiations that took place before the Paris Accord and the role India played, uh, the unifying role that India played in bringing many countries on board, the ones who were as well. uh, and, and, uh, and on the sidelines of the Paris Agreement and Accord that was signed was the announcement of the International Solar Alliance talking about how these are the kind of energy sources that countries and that the world should focus on. International Solar Alliance is also uh, India's baby. It is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initiative with, uh, 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 with which uh, the world has moved on uh, to looking at solar energy as a huge alternative. And we're not saying that it has not been done. One of, uh, was that one of the cause, you know, ch uh, championing the cause of solar energy was that one of the initiatives and tasks uh, that has been recognized uh, by the united nations for which the prime minister today is being awarded and felicitated Absolutely, Avantika. One of the main reasons why uh, India is being felicitated with this award, uh, the Paris Accord needed leadership for the agreement itself to come into place, for consensus to be built. And the two countries that really help, uh, we will not take away from uh, from the uh, from uh, actions and and the support that came uh, the uh, came the world community's way from China. But the two countries that really led the way were France and uh, India, uh, amid a lot of opposition back then the United States of America was also on board but the uh, convincing that was required for the US to be on board was also done by these very two countries mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. immediately after the a uh, new administration uh, came to power in the United States of America. U.S. has pulled out of the accord. So a huge missed opportunity for the United States of America. Hmm. But uh, doesn't take away from the fact that even if U.S. were to be a part of the Paris Agreement, the two countries that really delivered on, on their promises and their words are France and, uh, and, and India. The reason why uh, it is a joint award for Prime Minister Narendra Modi and uh, okay. President uh, Macron. All right, uh, Gita, just kindly stay on with me. We're going to cut straight across uh, to the ceremony and listen in uh, to the proceedings. So difficult to conserve as tigers, because tigers is one of the very, very few animals to attack Indians to kill us, to eat us. I mean, malaria, mosquitoes are more dangerous to humans than tigers, <laughs> but they don't try to eat us. Uh, so making the tiger population grow is a great credit to India, and it shows the dedication to nature under your leadership. Finally, solar energy. Energy is at the core of everything. And what an achievement to connect 700,000 villages of India to the electrical grid. True, not all households are still connected, that's the next. But to connect every single village, 700,000, it's such an achievement. And more and more it's happened with solar, with big solar, with small solar, but transforming the economy from the old coal base into the new solar base. And through that you also create many more jobs, because there are many more jobs in the solar energy. And we had the honor not just to honor you in New York, but also to honor Kochi International Airport, the first fully solar airport anywhere in the world. And I tell my... And it's not a small airport. 
Kochi is bigger than any airport at the African continent except for South Africa. So it's a big airport from an international perspective. When I told my, tell my Chinese friends, my European friends, my American friends, well, if the Indians can do that in Kochi, for sure you can do that in Florida, or you can do, the, do that in the uh, sunniest part of China or, or Europe. So it's again inspiring the entire world and making International Solar Alliance a huge positive for the future. I saw Prime Minister said that maybe this is the OPEC of the future. Yes, we will see an enormous transformation of the global economies into solar in the years to come. Last year was the first year in human history where we produced more solar energy than oil and gas, coal and, uh, and uh, nuclear combined. So the transformation is happening, we just need to speed it, speed it up. Finally, even our Prime Minister is not alone. Uh, without a good team, you cannot have achieved all this. Let me pay tribute to my very good friend, Dr. Harshwadanchi, the man who wiped out polo from India and is now transforming India into green, and to C.K. Mishra, <laughs> Chief Secretary of the Ministry, and all the other dedicated people, because you are the support team making what the Prime Minister is doing possible. Finally, we need political leadership. We need visionary leadership. We need the dedication and determination which you are providing. This is also in line with Mahatma Gandhi, who famously said, we need to be the change we want to see in this world. And Prime Minister, you are leading us in, in that uh, area. You make it possible for us to be the change we want to see in this world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Solheim, for sharing with us the keen observation, uh, the change which you see in India, and that definitely inspires and motivates everyone. Thank you so much. And may I now request uh, Shrimati Sushma Swaraj, the Honorable Minister for External Affairs, for her remarks. भारत के लोकप्रिय प्रधानमंत्री आदरणीय नरेंद्र मोदी जी संयुक्त राष्ट्र के महासचिव महामहिम एंटोनियो गुटेरस जी यूएनईपी के एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर मेरे पुराने मित्र श्री एरिक सलेहम जी मंत्रिमंडल में मेरे सहयोगी और आज के कार्यक्रम के आयोजक पर्यावरण मंत्री श्री डॉक्टर हर्षवर्धन जी डॉक्टर महेश शर्मा जी इस सभागार में उपस्थित भारतीय जनता पार्टी के आदरणीय राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष अमित शाह जी मंत्रिपरिषद के मेरे बहुत सहयोगी गण उपस्थित भाइयों और बहन आज भारत के लिए बहुत बड़े गौरव का दिन है आज हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी को संयुक्त राष्ट्र के द्वारा पर्यावरण के क्षेत्र में नेतृत्व देने के लिए चैंपियंस ऑफ अर्थ पुरस्कार से सम्मानित किया जा रहा है मित्रों ये पुरस्कार उस असाधारण नेतृत्व का सम्मान है जो प्रधानमंत्री मोदी भारत के साथ साथ विश्व को भी प्रदान कर रहे हैं आप में से शायद कुछ लोगों को जरूर याद होगा कि जब पेरिस समझौते से कुछ विकसित देशों ने बाहर निकलने की बात की और उस समझौते की सफलता पर एक बड़ा प्रश्न चिन्ह लग गया उस समय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी ने सबसे आगे आकर कहा था कि पेरिस समझौते पर हस्ताक्षर हमने किसी देश के मोह या दबाव में नहीं किए थे बल्कि भारतीय संस्कृति जो 5000 बरस पुरानी भारतीय संस्कृति है उसके प्रति आस्था के प्रतीक के रूप में किए थे ये पुरस्कार उस संकल्प का सम्मान है जो विश्व को आश्वस्त करते हुए प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने दिया था गुतेरस जी और एरिक जिस भारतीय संस्कृति का जिक्र प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया था मैं उसके बारे में बताना चाहती हूं कि हम अर्थ को प्लेनेट नहीं मानते 
पृथ्वी हमारे लिए ग्रह नहीं है पृथ्वी हमारे लिए मां है मदर अर्थ और हमारे शास्त्र भरे पड़े हैं उन सूत्रों से जहां पृथ्वी को मां कहकर पुकारा गया है अथर्ववेद का एक सूक्त है माता भूमि पुत्रो हम पृथ्व्या भूमि मेरी माता है और मैं पृथ्वी का पुत्र हूं और इसीलिए मुझे याद है कि बचपन से हमें यह सिखाया गया था कि सुबह उठकर जब पलंग से नीचे पांव उतारो धरती पर रखो तो हाथ जोड़कर कहना पादस परशम क्षमस्व में हे धरती मां मैं तुम्हारे शरीर पर अपने पांव उतार रहा हूं मुझे क्षमा करना और यही एक कारण है कि पश्चिम में जब भवन बनाए जाते हैं तो ग्राउंड ब्रेकिंग सेरेमनी की जाती है लेकिन भारत में जब भवन बनाए जाते हैं तो भूमि पूजन समारोह किया जाता है हम पृथ्वी का पूजन करते हैं विधि विधान से करते हैं और केवल पूजन नहीं करते हम क्षमा मांगते हैं उससे जब पहला कुदाल चलाते हैं तो कहते हैं मां तुम्हारे हृदय को छलनी कर रहे हैं हमें क्षमा करना और केवल पृथ्वी से नहीं मांगते क्षमा हम उन चीते चीटियों से भी क्षमा मांगते हैं हम उन कीड़े मकोड़ों से भी क्षमा मांगते हैं जिन्होंने अपने घरों दे उस धरती पर बना रखे होते हैं हम हाथ जोड़कर कहते हैं कि अपने स्वार्थ के लिए अपना घर बनाने के लिए हम तुम्हारे घरों दे तोड़ रहे हैं तुम्हें यहां से दूर जाना होगा कहीं और घरों बनाना होगा हमें क्षमा करना यही भारतीय संस्कृति की विशेषता है कि हम अंतरिक्ष की भी शांति की बात करते हैं और हम पृथ्वी की भी शांति की बात करते हैं इसी आस्था की बात प्रधानमंत्री कर रहे थे जिस समय उन्होंने पेरिस समझौते के लिए संकल्प लिया था कि हम इस समझौते को फेल नहीं होने देंगे और मैं आज कहती हूं कि उसी संकल्प के बाद बहुत तेज गति से उन्होंने पर्यावरण के क्षेत्र में काम प्रारंभ किया जो आइसा इंटरनेशनल सोलर अलायंस उन्होंने फ्रांस के साथ मिलकर बनाया था उसको बहुत तेज गति से आगे ले जाने का काम किया कुतरस जी आज एक घटना मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूं जिस समय वर्तमान सरकार आई तो प्रधानमंत्री जी ने एक समिति का गठन किया जो जलवायु परिवर्तन पर चर्चा करने के लिए बनी थी मैं उस बैठक में थी इसलिए मैं साक्षी हूं उसकी बहुत खुलकर चर्चा हो रही थी और पूरी सभा दो भागों में बटी हुई थी एक तरफ पर्यावरणवादी दूसरी तरफ विकासवादी पर्यावरणवादी कह रहे थे कि ऐसे विकास का क्या लाभ जो प्रकृति को विनाश करके नष्ट करके किया जाए जिस दिन प्रकृति क्रोधित होगी तो इस पूरे विकास का विनाश कर देगी और दूसरी तरफ विकासवादी कह रहे थे कि विकसित देशों ने अपने आप को तो सब कुछ कर लिया प्रकृति को नष्ट करके अपने देशों को विकसित भी कर लिया और आज जब हमारे जैसे देशों की बारी आई तो हमें प्रवचन दे रहे हैं जलवायु परिवर्तन की बात कर रहे हैं पर्यावरण सुरक्षा की बात कर रहे हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी बहुत शांति से सुनते रहे और अंत में पूरी चर्चा का समापन करते हुए उन्होंने कहा कि क्या पर्यावरण की सुरक्षा करते हुए विकास नहीं हो सकता मैं तो समझता हूं कि पर्यावरण की सुरक्षा करते हुए विकास हो सकता है तो कुछ लोगों ने प्रश्न किया कि औद्योगिकरण के लिए बिजली चाहिए हमारे यहां तो कोयला है थर्मल पावर की जगह कहां से बिजली आएगी तो उन्होंने तुरंत कहा बिजली चाहिए वो थर्मल की जगह सोलर से भी आ सकती है तो फिर प्रश्न आया कि सोलर से कितनी बिजली आ सकती है और सोलर की बिजली महंगी कितनी होगी तो उन्होंने कहा कि सूर्य के पास तो अपार ऊर्जा है जितना चाहो वो दे सकता है ये तो आपको लक्ष्य रखना है कि कितनी बिजली चाहिए और जहां तक महंगी का सवाल है जब ज्यादा चीज आने लगती है तो अपने आप सस्ती हो जाती है उन्होंने उसी दिन कहा कि हम पर्यावरण की सुरक्षा के साथ विकास करके दिखाएंगे मित्रों यह उच्च इच्छा शक्ति का सम्मान है 
जो इच्छा शक्ति उन्होंने उस बैठक में प्रदर्शित की थी और वो शब्द शब्द नहीं रह गए उन शब्दों को उन्होंने कार्यों में परिणत कर दिया हैरान हो गया था विश्व जिस समय उन्होंने एक महत्वाकांक्षी लक्ष्य रखा 175 गीगावाट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी 175 गीगावाट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी हम पैदा करेंगे 175 गीगावाट सर पूछो तो उससे पहले हमने कभी गीगावाट शब्द का इस्तेमाल ही नहीं किया था हम मेगावाट में बात करते थे लेकिन गीगावाट में 175 गीगावाट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी और उसमें भी कहा सौ हंड्रेड गीगावॉट केवल सोलर से 60 गीगावॉट विंड से यानी सूर्य और पवन जिनके पास अगाध संपदा है कभी खत्म न होने वाली संपदा है हम उससे करेंगे और आज मैं ये कह सकती हूं कि प्रधानमंत्री ने जो शब्द अपनी इच्छा शक्ति दिखाते हुए उस दिन कहे थे आज उसे पूरा कर दिखाया जिस सौर ऊर्जा को लोग महंगी कहकर अपनाने से कतरा रहे थे आज गुतेरस जी और एरिक मैं आपको बताना चाहती हूं सत्रह रुपए उन्नीस पैसे वाली वो ऊर्जा आज दो रुपए चवालीस पैसे में मिल रही दो रुपए चवालीस पैसे टू रुपीज एंड फोर्टी फोर पैसा तभी मैंने कहा कि उस इच्छा शक्ति का सम्मान है जो उन्होंने दिखाई है और आज भी पर्यावरण के क्षेत्र में जिस तरह का नेतृत्व प्रधानमंत्री कर रहे हैं जब एस बने थे सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स तो ये कहा गया था कि हम इस लक्ष्य को केवल तब प्राप्त करेंगे जब भारत इन लक्ष्यों को प्राप्त कर लेगा अगर भारत ने प्राप्त नहीं किया तो हम फेल हो जाएंगे लेकिन तब भी प्रधानमंत्री जी ने कहा था उस समय वो यूएन में बोल रहे थे दो में कि भारत केवल आपकी अपेक्षाओं पर पूरा नहीं उतरेगा बल्कि समय अवधि से पहले इन लक्ष्यों को प्राप्त करके कभी आपको फेल नहीं होने देगा यह मैं विश्वास दिलाती हूं यह पुरस्कार उस विश्वास का सम्मान है मैं हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करती हूं सेक्रेटरी जनरल गुतेरस का एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर यूएनईपी एरिक का कि उन्होंने प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व को यह पुरस्कार देकर उनके नेतृत्व को एक वैश्विक पहचान बख्शी है आज विश्व मंच से यह कहा जा रहा है कि चैंपियंस ऑफ अर्थ के रूप में हम प्रधानमंत्री मोदी का चयन कर रहे हैं हम आभार व्यक्त करते हैं आपके प्रति क्योंकि ये कुछ ऐसी संस्थाएं हैं कुछ ऐसे इदारे हैं अगर इनकी मोहर लग जाती है तो पूरा विश्व मानने लगता है कि हाँ ये काम हो रहा है मैं पुनः आपके प्रति आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ आपने हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी के सशक्त नेतृत्व को सम्मानित किया है असाधारण नेतृत्व को सम्मानित किया है उनके संकल्प को सम्मानित किया है उनकी इच्छा शक्ति को सम्मानित किया है और विश्व को दिए गए उनके विश्वास को सम्मानित किया है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद Thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for sharing with us certain uh, key insights, which again reflected on the very noble vision and mission which our honourable Prime Minister has towards protecting the Mother Earth and the change which he is leading. Thank you so much, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, we are really delighted, in fact, really honoured to have the presence of uh, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres present with us, the United Nations Secretary General. I would now like to request and invite him for his special address. Honorable Prime Minister Modi, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I'm extremely pleased to join you to present the United Nations Champions on the Hearth Award for Policy Leadership for 2018. And today we recognize a statesman who embodies the true meaning of leadership. Prime Minister Modi recognizes that climate change poses a direct existential threat to us all. Prime Minister Modi knows that we need to do what we need to do to avert catastrophe. And Prime Minister Modi understands the enormous benefits of climate action. Many other leaders also recognize, also know, and also understand 
The difference is that Prime Minister Modi not only recognizes, knows and understands, but that he acts with enormous energy to make things change. And this leadership is today more necessary than ever. Because let us be clear, climate change is still running faster than what we are. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change that we absolutely must implement is not being indeed fully implemented and many leaders around the world are not doing enough to make sure that it becomes a reality. And we know that the Paris Agreement is not enough. We know that we need more ambition. We know that we need to increase the engagements that were made in Paris when, when 2020 countries will present their new uh, commitments. But the truth is that this example of leadership that Prime Minister Modi represents is not being followed enough in the world. Now, the truth is that Prime Minister Modi also represents an extraordinary legacy. India has always been a fundamental pillar of civilization, philosophy, culture in our world. And uh, starting by the Vedas and uh, looking at the extraordinary role of Mahatma Gandhi, there is always a very clear commitment to the harmonious relationship between humankind and nature. And this vision of harmony is the vision that guides what is today the most enlightened policy in relation to the environment and the economy, in relation to climate action as an absolute priority in today's world that is assumed by Prime Minister Modi and by the government of India. And uh, we need also to recognize that this example must fructify, that other leaders must look at what's happening in India and must do the same, of course, with the different circumstances in different countries, to make sure that we are able to win the race against climate change and that we are able to understand that today there is no contradiction between climate action and development. On the contrary, the green economy is the good economy. Technology is on our side. Those that will bet on the grey economy will have a grey future. And those that, like in India, are betting in the green economy will have a dominant role in the global economy in the decades to come. And this vision proves that it is absolutely possible at the same time to provide for the people of the country, the jobs that are needed, the perspectives of development that are necessary, the conditions of well-being that are essential, and simultaneously guarantee the harmony with nature, have climate action as a priority, and make the green economy the economy of India. And indeed, and the Prime Minister Modi's leadership, India has installed 300 million LED light bulbs. I learned it yesterday. It's a remarkable achievement. <laughs> also, the 40 million clean burning cook stoves in Indian homes. When I was High Commissioner for Refugees in many refugee camps, I saw the drama of women that had to go sometimes miles and miles to search for wood to be able to use their stoves in their small huts or in small houses, and then to see the effect of the smoke of those uh, stoves uh, uh, in the health of the children, in the health of the parents. Now, the truth is that with these clean burning cook stoves, India is addressing indoor air pollution which affects women and children so acutely. And it's another way to prove that the green economy is the good economy and the well-being economy. Okay, that was the UN Secretary General who's addressing the ceremony in which the Prime Minister Narendra Modi did receive the United Nations highest environmental honor champions of the earth for his contribution and his commitment to the cause of climate change. Foreign Affairs Editor Geeta Mohan is with me. Uh, she, in fact, has been tracking all of the speeches very closely. Uh, Geeta, what did you make of Sushma Sarad's speech uh, about what she had to say? Uh, it, it's a great moment for India. It's an absolutely prestigious award that has been uh, given to our Prime Minister 
for his efforts and initiatives. Uh, but there are also certain challenges for this government. There are challenges uh, plenty. Uh, what did you gather and what did you make of her speech? Well, it is a speech that really spells out what the priorities of Modi government really is when it comes to fighting climate change and looking at sustainable development. Remember, Avantika, climate change and tackling climate change, reducing carbon gas emissions are part of the sustainable development goals that have been spelled out by uh, the United Nations that India is a part of, India adopted and is, is looking at achieving by uh, 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 before, before time, which is what uh, Sushma Swaraj, the external affairs minister, has spelled out at the United Nations General Assembly session in her speech and has reiterated today when she says that India has been a leader uh, uh, and, and has played a leadership role in tackling climate change and also uh, look at the uh, uh, spelling out the things that India has done uh, to move forward, whether it is beating plastic pollution or trying to ensure that there is absolute public awareness of the kind of threats that, uh, that, the, the, that the world is faced with today uh, when it comes to climate change and the, and the harmful effects of uh, climate change. Having said that, there is a lot that still needs to be done while this is an award and it's a prestigious moment and a, 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 an honor, a, a moment of honor for India and, and uh, uh, amidst the world community, Avantika. But there still is a lot that needs to be done. Absolutely, and especially government. with the fact that India is also, Geeta, one of the fastest growing economies and, and you know, harbors some very high ambitions uh, of industrial growth as well. Well, absolutely. And the reason why India has always questioned whether, uh, including China, with China, right. whether if India and countries such as India and China that have moved towards industrial revolution much later than the developed countries right. should get some preferential treatment or not. Uh, but in that, we are not lacking or we are not going to really uh, uh, move away or shy away from the commitments that have been made. And in that, leadership role that India has shown is the reason why this award is... And examples. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.